All right, guys. We are live. I'll give everybody a chance to get on. Get going on my cigar. Then we're going to talk dogs. Dog training. Uh, as always, elite members, so members of my um, online dog training, uh, get priority for questions answered. So if you're one of those people, make sure you uh, throw that up in your question. Um, and I'll probably recognize your username anyways. How's it going, guys? I see you all jumping on here. So, I'm sure if you guys uh, follow me a little bit, you know, we just came back from Nationals. Um, I posted the video kind of of the road trip. And, um, you know, the road trip, uh, it was a fun road trip. Uh, it was a ton of, it was, it was really fun from a dog training perspective. And it was just fun to get out on the road with the dogs and, and, and go to a competition. I had a really good time. Um a little frustrated that we didn't finish where we wanted to finish, but I'm also motivated. As much as I'm frustrated, I'm motivated. I'm motivated for next year because it's a game of inches, and uh, you know, in some in some you know cases, we were in inches away. You know. There's two factors when you go on the field. There's two factors when you go on the field. Factor number one. You know, the training, and that's, the, of course, the most important factor. But factor number two is also the dog. And, um, you know, I've got no ego wrapped up in, like, the quality of my dog. Like, he has, like, he's a really high frustration dog, um, but he also carries a fair bit of nerve. He has good drive, um, but he, he also carries a fair bit of nerve, and he doesn't have, like, the best genetic grips. So those two factors are always going to kind of be up against me when I go on the competition field. So, you know, it's fun, though, because I know I'm not driving the fastest car on the track, so to speak. Um, but the question is, can I drive it better than people with faster cars? And the answer, of course, was um, in the last competition, I drove it definitely faster than some people with much better, uh, you know, proverbial uh, cars. Like they just had a, a better genetic quality of dog. But then there were some people out there that... You know, they had a better dog and, and the training was, you know, equal, if not better. And, and it held up better, you know, and uh, that's the reality. I have a young dog. He's three years old. He's three years old. So he is relatively young, but I have a good foundation in now. So this this year is all just building and preparing for competition. So it's going to be a bit of a different year than last year. Last year, I was still teaching the dog a lot of things. And, um, you know, I was still working on trying to fix problems. Of course, there are still problems. There are still things to fix. But, you know, now it's more a lot more like playing with the gears that we have, playing with the, the dog that we have and trying to build to that um, just to make up a few more inches in that competition because it was a game of inches. You know, it was a game of inches like – Something goes a little bit better in one area or in the other area. Then next thing you know, you're on the podium. Something goes a lot better, you know. Uh, I'll give you an example. The guy who won, and Lee, all credit to him. Great guy, by the way. Um, he won. Uh, I think him and I were the only two people in the competition with dogs from our own breeding. And uh, he won um, all in the protection. Like, he was kind of out of it. Then he hit the protection, and boom, he won with the protection. He just got, I think, the highest score in protection, right? And it was because his protection was technically perfect. You know, the dog was of good quality, you know, but then you saw some dogs on the field and this is good, by the way, these dogs were getting motherfucker points, right? Like the dogs maybe weren't as technically perfect as, as my dog or Ann Lee's dog or other dogs in the field, but these dogs were motherfuckers. Like you could just see the power and the quality and they were getting what we call motherfucker points when they go out there and they're just so strong and they're just so undeniably dominant in their performance that they get those points and it's funny because my last two dogs that i competed with were 
the kind of dogs that got me motherfucker points. This dog that I have now, he's never going to get me those points. Um, so it's a little bit of a different feeling. I think I might get a second dog. I'll definitely keep con con uh, continuing with uh, Gage, but, uh, you know, that's just a few of my thoughts. All right, so Gustavo, he has uh, elite member in the puppy training course. You are awesome. Oh, thank you, my friend. I appreciate you. Uh, Caucasian Shepherd in north of England. Hey, nice to see you. Uh, can't recommend the off-leash course enough. It's awesome. Evening has. Can't wait for the seminar. GG on Nationals. Thank you. Yeah, we'll see you at the seminar. Those of you that don't know, we'll be doing a um, uh, pet training and a behavior modification seminar in Ocala, Florida, Labor Day weekend. I think there are still there are still audit spots, and there may be um, because I'm bringing one of my uh, trainers with me. We have we're, we've made more working spots available. Um, if you want to work with one of my trainers who's also going to be there, he's really good, Steven. He's going to be working with me on the, the pet and the behavior modification. So, um, Do I still actively buy dogs from Staatsmacht? Um, I buy dogs wherever I buy them. I don't have one place that I buy dogs. Stefan had a breeding recently. That's Staatsmacht, by the way. Stefan had a breeding recently that I wanted a puppy from. There just wasn't enough puppies and... Uh, I guess I didn't get one, but uh, yes, I would buy a dog from him for if it was the right breeding. How long do you expect a puppy to learn to pair the cue with the position? Every puppy can be different, and it depends really on your training and how clear you're making it. Do you do much with scent detection? Has? Uh, this is Jay asking. No, I don't really. Um, at this time, I don't really have an interest in scent detection. I have an interest in anything competition related. So I actually, you know, it's funny. I was just reflecting today on how much I freaking know about tracking now. You know, tracking is one of those things where in the beginning I hated. I was like, ah, oh, this sucks. Tracking sucks, you know, because you got to lay the track and it's not fun. Um, and then I really kind of got caught up. I'm a competitive kind of person. So I... I got caught up in the complexity of it and then it's like okay well there's some people they go out there and they're they're smoking 90s every time they track why am i not getting 90s you know and listen tracking whether you're tracking for igp police whatever else there's way more things in common than not in common so tracking for me is tracking it just depends on the kind of tracking you want and the outcome that you want will change some of the things that you do but fundamentally tracking is tracking and you know in this complex sport of IGP, I've learned so, so much about tracking. And I know, you know, uh, I've always known a little bit about police tracking. Like, I made it my business to kind of know whether we're talking article to article tracking, whether we're talking man trailing. Um, you know, I've, I've educated myself on the different types of tracking out there, and I've definitely trained it. Um, but I tell you what, man, IGP tracking has made me much better at training tracking overall, you know, and I can confidently say that. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Hi, Haz. You mentioned Kelly in your last video. Are you still training with him? Um, I don't train with Kelly, but uh, Kelly is a very good helper. You guys could see the, the work that he did um, in the video. Uh, what is the video? The, the, the Nationals video. You guys could see the competition work he did. He's, he's a fantastic helper, and, and uh, you know, whether he's working the front half or the back half, you know, I've always said he's a fantastic helper. So, you know, if you have a chance to work with him, I recommend you work with him. Uh, I have two female shepherds. You have helped me tremendously with my girls living together just by watching your free videos. I appreciate that. Uh, do I happen to know Mace's BRN number? No, I do not. Not off the top of my head. That's like seven numbers. <laughs> How do I get my fronts so fast? Well, number one... My dogs love coming to me because they have an, a lot of positive associations with coming to me. And um, it's all about controlling the emotion of the dog, right? Like, how does he do every behavior? How does, why, what is he thinking? How does he feel about the behaviors? Usually when you have a problem in how the dog performs the behavior, you have two issues. You either have a mechanical issue, the dog doesn't know how to perform the behavior, or you have a feelings issue, the dog doesn't feel the right way about the behavior, even if he knows how to perform it. So... 
that would be the long answer to your short question. Uh, let me see. Uh, elite member here from J Yana. What do you think about using a dummy filled with food instead of a tug or toys for structured play? My kid is way more interested in playing with the food dummy. Food dummy? Like a, like a dummy of a human? Or like, are you talking about like, like toys? Um, toys? Like, like, a, like, a, like a doll or something that you fill with food? I would say if it's a reasonable size, use it for structured play. Um, if it's like a gigantic mannequin that you filled with food, I would say no. <laughs> I, I hope it's a misunderstanding a little bit here. Um, but yeah, look, if the dogs like it and it's like easy for you to use to play with, of course, use it. Do you feel you are too hard on yourself sometimes? That's from Canine German Shepherd. No, I don't. I don't feel I'm too hard on myself. I feel like I'm honest. And as honest as I am with my clients, as honest as I am with the people that train with me and work with me, I must be the same to myself. Otherwise, you are what you call a hypocrite. Um, and if you want to ever achieve anything in life or do something and leave, make an impact and leave a mark on the world, um, you have to be ruthlessly uh, self-critical. Because if you don't do that, nobody else will do it for you. You know? So... Uh, I don't think so. I think I, I give myself the appropriate amount of flack that I need in order to take accountability for my mistakes and to also accomplish more in the future. Maddie Kylie, how goes the fish? The fish go well. The fish go well. What are some things you've learned lately which you are referring to in tracking if you don't mind sharing? Um, so IGP tracking, like, I mean, look, it's not something that I can share in a live per se, but like, I'll just say this, like IGP tracking is it is a game of precision okay so you are marked on literally every portion of the track how deep is your dog's nose is your dog this far off the ground is your dog this far off the ground is your dog that far off the ground with their nose how close are they to the track are they step to step to step to step or are they just kind of kind of just going along the track the corners right does the dog check left, then go right, or does the dog just head snap right and go right? Does the dog overshoot the corner? Does the dog circle on the corner, right? Does the dog speed up on the track? So is the dog going fast, slow, then fast, then slow? Does the dog speed fluctuating on the track? When the dog indicates an article, do they bump the article? Do they move the article? There's just so many different things, right, that you're getting marked with on the track, and in order to you know, play that game, and in order to be successful in that game, you have to be able to train every one of these things and, you know, play with the dog's emotions on the track in such a way that you can get through a track. And guess what? It's not just tracking in sod. It's not just tracking in hay. It's not just tracking in dirt. You know, it can be a combination of, like, three or four different terrains in one track, right? Um, there's just so many, there's so many different factors you know sometimes you can go uh tracking and it's a really easy track at a trial sometimes it's really long track sometimes you just draw the short straw and you're tracked like there's a corner in the water or something because the field is all bogged down there's just so many things and if you want to play that game at a high level you have to understand these things you have to look at these things and say okay, okay how can i maximize my performance here with the dog that i have here what motivates this dog how can I get him to just take those corners a little bit harder and deeper? How can I get him to not mess with the article when he hits the article? How can I get him to indicate on the article? What do I need to do to him, right? So I'll, tell, I'll share some stuff that I'm doing. So on my last track, okay, and here's the thing. I didn't practice enough in hay, and I knew the tracking was on hay. I personally did not practice enough in hay before the nationals and that's on me like i practiced some in hay but i just didn't get enough access to hay and i to be honest could have snuck on some more fields and done some things maybe get myself access to hay around here i have access to park grass and i have access to sod but it seemed like every track i was getting on like every time i would lay a track at the local park somebody would run over with their dog somebody would fuck my track up basically and you know of course you still run the track but it's never gonna you're not going to get, you can't ask for the same things out of the dog if somebody ran over your track with their dog or whatever else. So, again, it's a game of precision, right? So, one thing where I really lost points um, 
on the track that I had was on the corners. The dog checked the corners and he pendulumed and circled on one of the corners, right? So I need harder corners. I needed the dog to be a little more intense on the corners. So right into my corners now, I, I'm putting very high value reward in the corner and I'm creating the expectation that the second he hits the corner, there's something big there for him. So like for me, I'm putting tiny articles in the corners. He takes two steps into a corner, boom, you know, there's an article, there's his ball on the article. Now I'm really creating a lot more value in the corners. So he tracks to find the corners now instead of he tracks to track, right? So, you know, the whole time he's tracking, I'm really putting a ton of emphasis on rewards in the corners and I'm putting less emphasis on rewarding the track in and of itself. So it's more like, I want him tracking to find corners right now. Now I have to even that out later. Otherwise there's some consequences to doing that. And that's the game of IGP. You try to fix one thing, you can mess something else up. So anyways, um, let's see what we else we got here. Has my GSD is highly reactive to coyotes, but nothing else. Well behaved otherwise. Her first interaction was as a young dog. She got, she gets triggered by the scent ever since. Any advice? Sorry, guys. My cigar went out while I was talking about tracking. This always happens. We got to start fresh now. Um, yeah, look, reactivity is reactivity. I don't care why it's happening. It needs to stop, right? So for me with my dog, something might really sketch him out, might really freak him out. If he doesn't stop, I will correct him. Pilot Kisses, the guy who owns Onyx is, or sorry, Gage's daddy, Onyx, my old dog. If they can track, they can do scent detection. Onyx is a purely tracking scent work machine, mostly thanks to Haz's tracking work. Well, I can't take full credit for Onyx. So A, Onyx is a genetic tracker. That dog was a motherfucker on the track. Like, it's hard to say dominant in tracking. There are a few dogs that you see that are dominant on the track. But he was dominant on the track. His tail would touch his back when he was tracking. You could hear the, like, you know, when he was, like, hitting the foot footsteps, like, the first, I think the first track I ran him, the first trial I ran him in a track, he was, like, totally out of control at the start. Lost some points for that. And once he hit the track, he was just like, <sighs> just like that, that, like, kind of growly breathing, like, just taking in that... <sighs> taking in that odor and he was just so like amped his tail was touching his back he made some technical mistakes needless to say but he was full power on that track to this day he's the only dog um that i've only that i've get, ever gotten a hundred in tracking igp2 we got a hundred in the track hopefully i'll replicate that with his with his son but onyx was one hell of a genetic tracker but the reason why and i'll tell you why i mean obviously there's the genetic component to his tracking and i think gage does share that like he does enjoy the track, probably not as much as his daddy did, but I'll tell you about Onyx's history. Hopefully that doesn't go up. Um, so Onyx, when I got him, was three and a half years old. And um, you guys may have heard this before, but, you know, he was a motherfucker. He was a motherfucker of a dog. And he was owned by an older gentleman. Like, the guy was, like, 85 years old, and he really couldn't control Onyx in obedience. He couldn't control him in protection. But what he could do with the dog was he could track. So he tracked a lot. Um, I do think Onyx was dismissed from one. So he, he would go into the tracks, uh, sorry, into trials, and he would just do, like, a tracking title with the dog. So the dog actually had a fair bit of tracking. He was dismissed, I think, from the one of his last trials with the gentleman before the guy sold him. Um, because uh, he attacked the judge, <laughs> right, um, on the track. But uh, other than that, like, the dog was, like, I think really the most outlet he got for the first three and a half years of his life was tracking. So that's probably why he loved tracking as much as he did, beside the genetic component. Is Gage a purebred German Shepherd or is he a herder? I recall hearing talk of a herder in this pedigree. Oh, he's purebred German Shepherd. I don't do IGP with mixes. Purebred dogs, paper dogs only. 
Always tell people better tracking dogs, shepherds offer dual purpose qualities. It's very true. You know, I think herders and German shepherds and German sh uh, herders that have more of the shepherd influence make better trackers. And it's because I think tracking is a little bit more cerebral. Malinois are more like reactive in terms of like stimulation response, right? It's not that you can't get great Malinois tracking. Of course you can, but like I think it's easier for the German shepherds um, to train them. Mike uh, says, I have a strong dog that's in the power obedience course. Moderate distraction areas, I've needed too many active corrections. He comes back at me with arousal each time, and they get rewarded with chase. As the dog progresses, is this why you like using the electric? Yeah, I mean, look, if you're doing power obedience the right way, he's referring to my competition obedience training, your dog really won't leave you that much, like for distractions. Because if you do power obedience the right way, you are like the most arousing and exciting thing in your dog's world. Um, so yeah, something might sketch him out or distract him a little bit from time to time. And when you make your correction, um, it should make the dog more active and more powerful. But it actually, I don't do it just because, oh, the dog gets distracted and that's how I can like force him to stay with me. Like the fundamental point of power obedience is that you make yourself so valuable, so exciting for the dog. And I say this to anybody who does bite sports should understand this. When your dog does bite work, does he look away from the helper? Does he look away from the decoy? Of course not, because the decoy and the helper for him is the most valuable, exciting, and also, to some degree, concerning individual on the field. So there might be five people, six people, 20 people on the field. His eyes never leave the helper. They never leave the decoy. That is the, the concept of power obedience. You become basically the helper or the decoy, obviously in a bit of a different context for the dog. Matt Atkinson says, does the reactive course touch on crying and whining constantly when they see dogs? The reactive course is how to deal with dogs that are reactive to other dogs. That is a form, what you're describing is a form of reactivity, okay? Um, but, uh, you know, you don't really need like an advanced behavioral modification method to fix that problem. You just need to correct your dog. If your dog understands obedience, training, if your dog understands the meaning of no, if your no is meaningful, you should be able to say, hey, don't do that. And every time you do that, something unpleasant happens, so stop doing that. Right? Why does your dog cry and whine when he sees another dog? Because he perceives value there. He's frustrated. Maybe he's insecure. There could be a lot of different reasons. But why is he perceiving that as a possibility? When my dog sees other dogs, he doesn't perceive possibilities. There are no possibilities. There's another dog there, but it can't impact him. It's impossible. In his mind, it's impossible. That other dog over there cannot impact him over here, right? Good evening, Has. How is the update on the website going? Uh, well, we're restructuring our courses. Uh, we're adding some courses. Um, you know, we're just uh, adding some stuff. So it's going. But I mean, if you're already in my courses, it's not really going to affect you. Uh, unless you have the gold course, you'll get access to any new content that we put up. Um, do I have any plans to do IGP competitions with Bang in the future? That's from Chimera. Yeah, I, I, I would like to. You know, she's a very, like, different type of dog to train. Very social for the most part. Um, definitely very independent. Not a ton of food drive, so it's making it a little bit challenging because I do all my foundation work with food, basically. Um, but it's, hey, I like challenges, right? So I think there's a lot of quality in the dog. So um, I brought her with me on that road trip just to kind of expose her to, you know, all the people, all the dogs, and, uh, you know, get a little more of a feel for her, just me and her training, you know. What can I do if my dog is nervous while staying at home alone? I can't wait always one, two, three hours till she starts barking to use the e-collar. Uh, yeah, well, no problem. Watch my free video on separation anxiety. That'll tell you exactly what to do step by step. I don't see my question for some reason. My dog was 
good with guns now after being woken by one he's scared to be in the room how do i approach this um you have to get the dog to overcome his fear right so for me i would use the place i'd put the dog on the place um i'd fire the gun have him stay on the place when he stays on the place i would reward him and just teach him to hold his place when the gun is being fired right let me see here I love your con it has I've wanted a protection German Shepherd forever I'm wondering if you want my dog if I want my dog to bark at the intruder would it confuse the dog if I told the dog not to bark at a friend who came over no it wouldn't confuse the dog you know but a lot of these types of behaviors are pre it's a predisposition in the dog does the dog have a predisposition to bark at people he or she doesn't know when someone comes to the door does your dog have the predisposition to make noise there well if he does that's fine but you should also have an ability to say to the dog hey it's fine stop making noise and if you don't well that's a problem right maddie collie says love the book tons of content i totally recommend anyone purchase it you'll be oh yeah guys check out my book um oh my god i told oh yeah no I, I was going to say i totally forgot the title of my book it's no nonsense dog training check it out guys it's exactly how the title says it is step by step every um you know every step i put in the book how i train a dog so you know it's probably the cheapest way to get access to all my training hey has can you talk a bit about working with dogs that aren't very motivated i'm working with a mastiff press and mix five years old that has me struggling been doing shorter sessions why is motivation a problem right like for me when i speak about a dog that's not very food motivated i'm talking about competition training where motivation is an extreme necessity right i don't want to really force anything in the beginning i want the dog to love to do it to want to do it because that's the emotional connection I want my dog to have with the work. But these things are not necessary for pet training. When you're talking about molossers and livestock guardians, a lot of these dogs don't have a natural desire to do obedience training anyways. So it's not that important, really. Like at the end of the day, motivation comes when the dog's like, okay, I'm going to have to do this. Like if I get a dog in and I have a four week time frame, let's say to train this dog, I don't like, and it, it doesn't even matter if I have a 10 week time frame. If I get a dog in and the dog doesn't want food, the dog doesn't want to play, you know, the dog doesn't want to do anything. I don't waste time trying to be like, Hey, please, please do it. No, this is pet obedience. For me, pet obedience is life, right? Pet obedience is life. Like you have to do this stuff. It's like, your kids have to go to school. They have to learn English. They have to learn math. You know, they have to learn to read, write, all the basics. They have to do it. I don't care whether they want to do it or they don't want to do it. They have to do it, right? My kids right now in swimming classes, he didn't want to do swimming classes in the beginning. Of course, I made his ass go to swimming classes because I don't want him to drown. It's a necessity. And now guess what? After a year, he loves swimming classes. The first bunch of swimming classes, he cried, right? Guess what? It's the same with dog training, <laughs> right? The dogs in the beginning, a lot of them, they don't want to do it. But for me, a dog must come. A dog must not drag on the leash. A dog must hold a place. A dog must hold it down. Fundamental, basic, functional obedience. The dog must do it. These are necessities for life. These are necessities for the dog's safety, well-being, and freedom, as well as the owner's safety, well-being, and freedom, as well as the, the general public safety around your dog. These are non-negotiable with me. So I don't need to waste weeks and weeks trying to convince the dog that he wants to do it. I just say, okay, buddy, we're doing it, whether you like it or not. And usually what you'll find is after you say, okay, for a couple of weeks, we're doing this, whether you like it or not. And I don't particularly care if you take the food or you don't. If you take the food, great. If you take the play, great. I'm going to offer it constantly throughout. It's your choice whether you want it or not. Um, usually you'll find after a couple of weeks, they start really being happy to work with you and take the rewards once they realize that, hey, this is what we're going to be doing. There's no other option. You're not going to be self-satisfying in the environment. We are working together. We are going to do this. It's good for you. It's good for me. It needs to happen. George says, I love the way you just say it, how it is, has. I learned so much from your videos and your book. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge. No problem, George. I'm glad you liked it. nomadic adventures it's the dog trainer blaming the dog and judges are the ones to ignore 
Haha. <laughs> you think I blamed my dog and the judges? I made some observations, but if you recall, I did not say at any point in time that had the judge done X, I would have won. I was not happy with the obedience judging. Part of why people like me, right, on social media, in the sea of dog trainers, is because I'm an honest guy. And I say exactly what I think and exactly what I feel. And I'm not afraid to say when I made a mistake. So, do I think my dog and my performance was the best out there on the field that day or that week? No, I don't. Do I think the obedience judging uh, did justice to my dog? No, I don't. Do I think my dog is the strongest on the field? I don't, and nobody else who's there do either. So, nomadic adventures, let me tell you something. I know the mistakes I made in obedience. I know the mistakes my dog made in protection. I know the mistakes on the track. I know all of them. And I also know the difference in quality between my dogs and some of the other dogs. Not all of them. My dog was not the worst one by any stretch of the imagination either, right? I was merely observing that I enjoy the challenge of training a dog who isn't a motherfucker. Because I'm used to motherfuckers. I've always had them. My last two competition dogs were motherfuckers. This one, not so much. But it's a different kind of challenge. So, I'm observing reality. And uh, if you don't like it, oh well. Go find somebody else to watch. Uh, you and Gage did an awesome job with Nationals. Really shows how hard work you both put in the sport and the bond you both have with each other. It really shows on the field. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I will say this. I will say this, if you'll notice too in my videos, I always say I'm very happy with the dog because I know in protection, he gave me just about everything he had. And for me as a dog trainer, I'm very happy. What really makes me upset when I trial is when I go out there and I know the dog didn't give me everything. When I know that I didn't take everything out of the dog, right? If that dog is capable of maximum 91, 92 points in protection, why didn't I get that, right? Why didn't I get close to that? Let's say I got 80 in protection, right? Because I made some big mistakes in training. I would be pretty upset, right? But I know that my dog was at pretty close to his maximum. People don't know. Only the people that train with me know what it took for me to get to that, those 89 points at nationals with that dog. And only people know what it took, the train with me, know what it took for me to get those uh, 81 points I got in obedience. Even though, like I said, I don't think that sport was actually reflective of his work. But that's neither here nor there. The great thing about today's day and age is I can say whatever I want about the score. But the video's out there for people to see. And uh, I think about 50,000 people have watched Gage's obedience routine to date. And uh, they can all draw their own conclusions about the work I did or didn't do with my dog and how he was feeling at the time and uh, whether I know what I'm doing or not, right? That's the great thing about video. I can say what I want to say, but I also show it all. I even have a video of my track on Facebook if you guys want to see that um, video and you can see the track too. None of this is like, oh, has said or he said or she said. Go watch the video. The video should tell you everything you know if you know what you're looking at. fucking things out again also the one area that i really am not happy with like i said my prep at nationals with was on the track because let's say i had scored oh i don't know 94 95 on the track which he's capable of doing right if he had a good track for sure we do that right well now we're on the podium right so at the end of the day the competition was really lost in tracking um and it was lost by me and guess what i did when i got home and what i'm still doing we're tracking baby Uh, let's see. How far can a handler push in protection before another decoy is necessary? I don't have any access to a decoy. Uh, you must, you must have access to a decoy. You can only do the basics. Fuck. Fuck.
I'm going to change the name of the stream to Relighting Cigars. You and Larry should do another live. That's from Maddie. You know what? Larry's doing IGP now too. Like I know he's got the bug. I see him training with his dog. I can't wait to see what he does with his dog. I think he'll do well. I think Larry's kind of like me. Maybe he's a little bit less, I don't know, straight up competitive in terms of like what he says. I know he's a competitive guy at heart, um, whether he, he admits it or not. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what he does. He has a nice dog. I really like his dog. Uh, I've seen the, like some of the work with his dog and I'm like, it's a good dog. So I think Larry will do well. He's not the kind of guy to fail in life, you know, to fail at anything. I really enjoyed the book. Thank you. That's from Smokes GTP. I appreciate that, buddy. Uh, Slovakian police dog will not go out and find a box for you. That's from Nomadic Adventure. I don't know what that means, my friend. I, I don't know. Uh, what are some of the ways you correct your dog? So many different ways. Um, so many different ways. Like, there's not, like, I'll correct my dog with my voice, with my hand, with a leash, with different collars. There's... There's a hundred ways you can correct your dog. I don't have like a one thing I do. And that's a problem a lot of people have. They have one trick. They have one thing they do. And if they don't have that thing, they're screwed, right? And your dog's not stupid. He knows that, right? If someone was only going to get one of your online courses, which would you recommend? Um, probably the Elite Off Leash, I think it's the best bang for your buck. If you would only get one course, um, if you could only get one course, I would get that one. Um, as long as you don't have an off-leash trained dog. Greetings from Croatia. Your book is great. Oh, that's awesome that you read it in Croatia. That is cool, man. I, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Where did those green dogs you got in come from? I never kiss and tell, so I'm not going to tell you. But suffice to say, very happy. Uh, nomadic Adventure, I was complimenting your accountability versus people always blaming the dog and trainer. Oh, well, I misunderstood you. But you know what? I'm glad that I misunderstood you because I don't want people to get it twisted. It is my fault it is 100% my fault that um, I was not on the podium at Nationals. Let's not get it twisted. I might observe certain realities, right? But at the end of the day, it's still my fault. If I'd worked a little harder in tracking, if I tracked a little more, if I'd made it a bit more of a priority, maybe I would have been on the, not maybe, I would have been on the fucking podium, right? It's my fault. There's no one else to blame. Sorry, guys, my light's coming up. Let me turn my light on here. But yeah, I don't want anyone to get that twisted. You know, I said what I said, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I take full accountability. I think you have a lot on your plate. Don't beat yourself up so bad. I'm not. I'm not. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not one of those guys that like self-flagellates. Um, I'm very comfortable with the result, and I'm, you know, I'm not too upset about it because again, like I said, I'm I'm happy with how the dog performed. Like if the dog had gone there and just quit on me, there's nothing worse for me than when the dog quits. Right? The dog didn't quit. He gave me everything he could give me within what he knew and what he's capable of, and uh, I'm I'm happy with that. I know I can make some improvements, but that's it. This is uh, from Pilot Kisses. Your wife, does she train dogs at all? If not, how does she feel about it all? <laughs> how does she feel about it all? Well, she feels pretty good about it all because uh, daddy takes care of her. So um, does she train dogs at all? Not at all. And I say that in a very loving way. She take, she trains the kids. That's what she trains. <laughs> Just bought your no-nonsense training book, and I look forward to buying your elite training courses. Good. I'm, I'm glad you I'm glad you enjoyed the book. What do you find most difficult trait in a dog when training them and why? Nerves. Nerves is the most difficult uh, trait in a dog because nerves are like 
they're like the they're they're like the cancel. They're like so like let's say you've trained something, you've trained it really well, and something trips the dog's nerves. All that training goes to shit, right? And Gage is a nervy dog. He has nerves. Like people are surprised, you know. It's funny, like people I was talking to some people at nationals and being like, man, you know, he's a little bit nervous. They're like, he's nervy? I'm like, yeah. And it's funny, like what like I could tell one guy didn't quite believe me. And then later on, like a couple of days later, he came over to me to tell me something in the competition. And like he kind of leaned over me and the dog was sitting next to me and the dog goes and growls at him. And I and I was just like, hey, knock it off. And then I see he's like, oh, shit, you're right. It's like they don't know that the dog's not social. They don't know that the dog's like a, like nervy. I know it because like and I mask it and I do a lot of things to mask it and I do a lot of things to cover it. But it's still there. And if I let it get carried away, it will ruin my performance. It will like if something causes my dog's nerves to fire off, I'm done, bro. I'm done. And, and, and that goes with anything. So, you know, with pet training, it's a little bit easier because a lot of the time you are dealing with nerves, but you can teach a dog to function in spite of their nerves, because obviously there's no style points, right? You're not getting points on power and precision, but in a game like IGP, if something hits the dog's nerves, now you're going to get grip issues. You're going to have control issues. You're going to have, you know, uh, focus and power issues, right? What do you look for in breedings when purchasing dogs that aren't your own? Um, I just look for the, I mean, look, if I'm purchasing a dog that doesn't exist yet, so like I'm purchasing a puppy, if I know the parents, I know the bloodlines, and it's like a bloodline that I really like, you know, like I'll give you an example, the, the puppy that I bought, the most expensive puppy video that I did, I bought that puppy sight on scene because I saw the performance, you know why I bought that puppy? Not because her mommy won, because I watched a video of her mommy, right? So I watched a video of her mother um nitra from ice ice and Krauss. and i watched the video and i was like oh my god i watched a video of that bitch and i said holy crap really really strong female i could just see it like if you've been in this game for a while and you watch a dog do like an igp routine or something you can see the power in the dog. You can see the confidence. You can see the dominance. You can see the grips. You can see the drive. You can see all the genetic things that you want to look for in a dog if you've been doing this long enough, right? And I saw the mother, and I was like, holy crap. She's one hell of a dog. And then the grandmother's one hell of a dog. And then the grandfather. And the, the bloodline's just so strong and so prepotent. So I bought a puppy from that, right? If it's a dog that's, like, already old enough, like those green dogs that I just, I just purchased three German Shepherds. And by the way, anyone looking for a real nice German Shepherd? hit me up because I got a few, right? Uh, I got, and they're green right now. So you want them for a more reasonable reasonable price than the tens and tens of thousands of dollars I'm going to sell them for when I'm fully trained. Now's the time to get them. But um, these dogs, I do know actually the parents and I because I've been buying dogs from from this, the bloodlines and actually they share some of the bloodlines with my um, last dog, Onyx, and, and my last dog, Gage, or my current dog, Gage. But like I go and I just test the dogs, right? I don't care what the pedigree is when I have a one-year-old dog in front of me. I can see the quality in the dog, whether whatever the pedigree might tell you. Do I train trainers? Yes, I do train trainers. Any recommendations on dog training books you think are worth a look at? I don't know because, to be honest, I haven't really read any that, like, I was like, wow, you know, this one's a game changer. Um, you know, if you want to understand e-collar training, I think Larry's book's a good book. Um you know, I do e-collar training in my book too. I, I do it a little bit differently, I think, than Larry does it. Um, but I mean, I read his book. I've read a few others. They were very underwhelming. I didn't like them at all, so I won't even mention them. Uh, where, when will your certificate course be available? Um, hopefully soon. <laughs> As his wife is so lucky. You should tell her that. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, how hard would it be to turn a PPD to do IGP? Um, I would really depend on the quality of the, uh, the dog, you know, uh, it would depend on the type of training, right? It would really depend on what was done with the dog prior to. If there's like really strong training in terms of like how the dog bites and and how the dog um, uh, how the dog does obedience, though, it's always a bit of a pain in the ass to fix a bad foundation, right? Do I know anything about Jerry Bradshaw? I don't. Um, I've never met the dude. 
Uh, obviously, like I've heard of him. He's the guy who like owns PSA or runs PSA. So I mean, but I don't know him personally. Can't wait to take your certification course, Has. Please bring it out soon. We are eagerly awaiting. I know, I know. Um, again, for me, it's more important to make sure it's done right and everything's in place before just getting it out there, right? I want, I want it to be exactly the way I want it to be before we bring it to the public. What's your thought on PSA versus others? Do you think it's more realistic for protection? No. Bite sports are not protection training, Okay. Um, that's fundamentally it. Buy sports are not protection training. Um, I don't, I don't really think it, it makes much of a difference, you know? Um, the heck, this thing's out again. Yeah. Um, buy sports, if you want to do protection training, do protection training. If you want to do bite sport, do bite sport. If you want a real dog and you want to do bite sports, guess what? You can do IGP, you can do PSA with a real dog. But whether your dog will protect you is, you know. A lot more about the, uh, the dog itself, I think, than this particular bite sport you choose to pursue. <laughs> I should train Joe Biden's dogs because they bit six people. Joe Biden can't run a country. What makes you think he could handle any kind of real dog training? You know, there's there's no help for people like Joe Biden and the people around him. Um, you know, I don't care what your political affiliation is. You know, incompetence is incompetence. And it like I, I it's funny because somebody said. You said that I actually posted, I did a little post on, not on my business page, because I don't do politics on my business page, but on my personal page. And I was just like, how you do something is how you do everything. He, he's fucked literally everything up. So of course he fucked the dogs up too, right? They had the one dog that bit a bunch of people and uh, they got rid of it or something. Then they got another dog and it bit a bunch of people. It's like, of course, right? Because it's not really the dog. It's just some nervy German shepherd, right? It's just some nervy German shepherd with a lack of leadership. <laughs> can't lead a country, can't lead a dog. Is your protection foundations course changing? Uh, no, but it's going to improve. I'm going to go through those videos. I'm actually already in the process of shooting other videos. And then I'm going to be doing a protection course exclusively for working canines. So like if you have a police canine um, or if you want to like do personal protection exclusively, I'm, I'm going to have a course coming out for that. <coughs> all right as i watched your podcast with diamond again solid conversation is dnc dog training philosophy similar to yours um i think uh so i mean it really would depend what you're asking like in terms of igp look like we all are individuals we do things our own way but when i needed help with my tracking i went to diamond and uh, he really definitely did help me with my tracking um, you know, in terms of obedience and protection, you know, he definitely gave me some ideas there as well. Uh, I don't really know him in terms of pet training, like what he does. Um, he runs a successful pet training business. So I would assume that, you know, like I said, how you do something is how you do everything. He's very, uh, competent, uh, in this, in the realm of dog sport. He's generally a competent individual. So I would assume him and his wife run a very competent pet training program as well. And, you know, I know it's a it's a pretty big, uh, what's the word, big business. So uh, I assume he's uh, pretty good at what he does. I'd like my next dog to be able to do both sport and personal protection as well. Just got into IGP, learning to be a helper, and I love the sport. Uh, looking to get my club level certification soon. Excellent. I think that's a great thing. 
I do personal protection with all my IGP dogs. And, you know, it's funny. We talk about IGP dogs and, and like, you know, I talk to other handlers and stuff about, like, how to keep our dogs sharp. Because, look, at the end of the day, if you just do the routine with the dog over and over again, they do get bored of it pretty quickly. And you see that reflected in their performance. They kind of have, like, that whole hum kind of performance. So a lot of handlers in the off season, they do, like, protection type stuff. They'll do muzzle work with their dog. You know, they'll do boogeyman's, they'll do suit work, they'll do a bunch of different shit just to kind of keep that dog active, dominant, sharp. They don't just do the same thing every single time. Like, I haven't even done protection since my trial, and I'm thinking of some, like, interesting, fun things to do with my dog in protection during this off-season just to kind of crank them up a little bit, get, get them a little bit crazy again, get them a little bit active again, and then I'll dial them back in before the next trial. Do I plan on coming back down to Diamonds again soon? Um, I don't have a concrete plan. I mean, never say never. Anything can happen. I don't have a concrete plan. Um, but uh, like I said, it could happen. But if I go to Diamonds, I'm not there to do anything other than go to Diamonds. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't try to like do my own thing while I'm at his place. I would be disrespectful to him. Um, you know, I just do. Uh, if I'm going down there, I'm following his program. Um, do you plan on coming, oh, sorry, how much drive do I need to do protection? Uh, I have a 2.5 month old male one. I think I ruined his drive a bit. Uh, his drive is what it is. Um, you know, it just let the dog grow and let the dog develop. He's two and a half months old. He's a puppy. <laughs> when will your first USA facility open up? Millions are waiting. I don't think millions are waiting. Um, I don't know. I got to I got to I we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not even going to answer that question right now. 13 month old German Shepherd always knows the ground fasting him tried to do focus heal but food drive is intermittent and just suddenly checks out the sniff. Yeah, you're not going to like make the dog want to eat food. Like sorry, train just to eat food. You have to make the 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 food about more than just eating. So my dog right now that I'm training bang, she has a very mediocre food drive. She checks out on me in a heartbeat that I'm really building over the last month, I'm changing the way she thinks about food. Like in the beginning, she would take the food like, you know those dogs, they like take five minutes to eat a handful of food. Now she like chokes on the food because she's like, Rawr. she's like eating it fast, right? Because I've kind of changed how she perceives food. It's not just eating. It's a competition. It's fun. She's taking the food. She's not eating the food. I'm changing her mentality, her emotion around the food. Those people that are in my online group, I'm posting, I already posted one of the videos there. I'm going to be posting all the videos there on her development so people can see kind of what I do with those types of dogs to bring them up a little bit. Does obedience reduce drive in a puppy to an extent? No, it doesn't. Unless you're doing some crazy shit. My advice to you is, 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 Get with someone that knows what they're doing and follow their program and you won't have any problems. Or take my online uh, course and follow the program there and uh, you won't have any problems. But if you start just trying to do random stuff on your own, yeah, you probably have some problems. I'm a big believer in, you know, I don't have to reinvent the wheel. Somebody else already invented it. I just need to look at what they did and make it work for me. How many litters has Gage had? I don't breed that dog. He's not a breeding dog. I've had people ask me to breed him. I won't breed him. He's he's not a dog for breeding. Um, you know, that's the reality of it. He's a nice dog for for competing. He's a nice dog that I have fun with, but he's not a dog for breeding. I wouldn't. He's not a worthy breeding dog. What if he has separation anxiety? Will the e-collar not reduce trust? You have a puppy. Don't say the word e-collar to me. Like I said, this is why you need to get in a program. Go train with somebody that knows what the hell they're doing. You know, e-collar, separation anxiety. You have a puppy. You don't have separation anxiety. The word e-collar shouldn't even enter your lexicon. 
you need to get on a program where somebody can help you follow the steps to properly raise the dog and train the dog do you have videos on dealing with loose dogs i've been following your course and was getting my dog reactivity under control got attacked by a great peer on the other day and we're back to square one you are not back to square one you have said in your mind you're back to square one because this happened now your dog believes it because you believe it i don't care if i have a reactive dog and he gets attacked tomorrow he's not going to be reactive it's not allowed right now fundamentally how do i deal with loose dogs um i stop them from doing anything right like i will not allow them like if, if there's a loose dog and it comes to me and my dog i'll put my dog in it down or i'll hold my dog behind me and i'll give him the boots right or if nothing i can't do anything to stop it then guess what i'm just going to turn my dog loose and whatever happens happens and uh then we'll pull them apart and then we'll just move on from there but there's no oh we're back to square one that's bullshit I can stop reactivity in a heartbeat. So like I said, my dog's reactive. Let's say, um, you know, he's, he's, he's reactive towards people. So let's say one day we run into a crazy guy. That guy gets really aggressive with me and my dog ends up biting him or something, right? I don't go, oh shit, now my dog's back to square one. Every time I see somebody, he's going to be an asshole. No, I'm be like, yeah, that was one instance where you did something happen and you had to do something or maybe something happened to you. But guess what? You're not allowed to continue to just be an asshole for the rest of your life because one thing happened. I'm going to do the same things that I did in the beginning to make you stop being reactive. You're not allowed, right? Here in Croatia, ear e-collars are forbidden. It would be so much easier to work without those restrictions and hiding e-collars. Well, you know what? I say this. Cocaine is probably forbidden where you are too, but I bet you find a lot of it, right? So just saying. Oh, we got a super chat. Thanks for the feedback on my APBT. She's now eight months. Can I start some protection work with her or is it too early? Yeah, you can certainly start some protection work with her as long as she has to drive. Uh, I saw in your Nationals video that you were in Quebec to do some protection training. Which trainer did you go to um, that are good for protection? Well, I trained IGP and um, I went to uh, John Philippe Mills in Quebec. Uh, I think he does fantastic work. So if you want to look him up, I'm sure he'd be happy to do that. But I don't know if he just does protection. I think he's more like IGP specific. Love your work and your channel, mate. I got a Dutch Shepherd from Laura Moore Dogs. You know what? I've seen some of their stuff on Facebook. It looks like they have like a pretty legit spot out there in the UK. You know, I'd love to get out to the UK at some point and see some of the working dogs there. You guys have a really cool working dog culture. I think you guys have some legit dogs, some legit training, some legit breeding going on out there um so that's awesome i, I think uh they, it looks like they really know what they're doing do i offer a shadow program yes we do you can email us um it isn't cheap but if you wanted to do it we do offer it and uh, we do offer an apprentice program it's not on the website right now but like if you wanted to come and you know uh apprentice for a few months we offer it again it's not cheap though how much does the owner's nerves impact a reactive dog very much right it's all about you know what kind of information are you sending down that leash my dog knows what information I send him, and he knows where I expect him to be. But my dog with somebody else would be extremely reactive. He'd be very dangerous in public, right? Um, it's very important. Um, so, yeah, it, it definitely, you can definitely impact your dog. If you're nervous, you know, it's not good. Like, you, you really have to get control of your nerves. And it's how do you frame it in your mind? When you have a reactive dog, I kind of, I always frame it with the reactive dog like, hey, bro, you know, I don't care if you're reactive. Because if you're reactive, I'm going to hold you accountable. I do care if you're not reactive. If you're not reactive, I'm going to be really like, wow, what a good boy you are. But eventually, over time, it just becomes an expectation. And my expectation is my dog is at this standard. If he deviates from this standard, there's hell to pay. If he maintains this standard, it's he's a good boy. Daddy loves you right? It's got to be that kind of mentality. My dog knows that that's the expectation. 
And that's why I take him into all sorts of <coughs> very public situations. And he performs as he should there because he knows that that's the expectation. And that expectation is clearly communicated to him. And I clearly communicate it to him when he fails to meet that expectation. Now that you've passed on Yaxi, do you have your eye on a possible Kyle? We are in talks to hopefully go and look at some German Shepherds soon. I'm not going to force it. It needs to be a very special dog. But I do need... So Gage is like... If you think of a sports team, in my mind, Gage is like a really good second stringer. And I have him playing the, the leading role right now. Really, I think he would do better as a second string dog. And I'd have a first stringer. I really want to try out two dogs at the same time, to be honest with you. That way, when I go to competitions like nationals, so on and so forth, I kind of have two chances instead of one chance. Um, so that would be my ideal. Uh, but I need a first stringer. So I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking for my superstar. I haven't found him yet, but I hope to. Hopefully, I will find him. Do showline German Shepherds have more hip problems than the straight back? No. And this idea of straight back is nonsense, by the way. Like, straight back is something people say when they're like, they don't really understand the difference between like show lines and working lines. And, and it's not even like, you'll see working lines that have, like Yaxi, for instance, has plenty of angulation in the rear. Um, you know, show lines tend to have a lot of angulation in the rear. And the reason they have the angulation is because it creates that flowy movement that they look for in the show ring. And that's why Yaxi has very sexy healing. Yaxi has that crazy goose stepping healing that, you know, people love in the videos um, simply because I probably should just take some more like promo videos of him just healing because like that's like his thing, right? Um, it's because of his angulation that he moves like that, right? Um, and and they, they breed them like that so that they gate, you know, they have that really nice gait when they move. Um, it has no impact on the dog's hip health. That's a common misconception. Hi, has my mom has a Pekingese who likes to lay down right behind my electric wheelchair where I can see him because of this. I've accidentally run him over a few times, but he continues to do this. Man, that's a tough one. I would I would really punish him for being behind the wheelchair just because you could... Pro I'm surprised you haven't killed him already, to be honest with you. I'd punish him just because it's like a life or death kind of issue. Um, I'd probably bonk him for being behind the wheelchair. Anytime he goes behind there, I just bonk him so he learns to avoid it because it's better that than killing him. What does a trainer look for in a year-old German Shepherd if he has what's needed for protection? I can't explain it to you. I could tell you some qualities. Like, I look for environmental sureness. I look for drive. I look for courage. But if you don't know how to test, if you don't know how to see these things, like, for instance, the last three dogs I bought, I probably looked at them for about five minutes, and I just knew. I mean, of course, it helped that I knew where they came from and I knew the parents a little bit, but, like, you just know. You just know. You know, like, one of the dogs I was looking at, um, I took him out. Like, he was green as grass. Like, he hadn't even seen a ball, no obedience, no bite work, nothing. I just took him out, and we were just hanging out, talking, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I just went, blah! I just yelled. And he didn't even flinch. He didn't look my way. He could have given a shit. And I said, okay, good nerves. <laughs> That's just one example of like a bunch of different things I did just to kind of see like, you know, I'll put him in a corner. I threatened him. I wanted to see what he would do, you know, things like that. Right. And and you could tell in like a few minutes whether you've got the pieces that you're looking for. I have a remote session with a trainer tomorrow. What are your thoughts on remote trainings? I have trained with this trainer in the past. If you trust the guy and he knows what he's doing, go for it. I do a lot of remote training. People uh, do remote trainings with myself and my trainers a lot. All right, guys. Does anyone have anything else for me? Cigar is almost done. So you know that means the, li the end of the live is coming. No, I don't know who that person is, so I can't really comment on them. Surprisingly good cigar. 
This was one of like the cheaper ones in the humidor. And I said, let me just pick this up. You know, cigars really depend on how I'm feeling. Like if I won nationals, I'd be smoking like an expensive cigar right now. So I said, you know what? Let me just get a cheap one out. I feel like doing a live. It's the middle of the week. It isn't like an accomplishment cigar, this one. This is more like a, just a hang out and talk about nothing in particular cigar. But it was actually quite good. So props to Havana Castle. I don't know what they call this one. Let me see. 20th anniversary edition. Okay. Thanks for taking the time to answer all our questions. No problem, guys. Glad you enjoyed it. Size of food for training. Royal Cannon, any others? Yeah, I use Royal Cannon when I train. I like the size of the food. I also feed my dogs Royal Cannon, so it's real convenient. What are my goals for next year? To win nationals, baby. To grow my business. To write another book. To put out more online courses. And uh, to continue doing what we do. Train more protection dogs. Train more pet dogs. Continue leaving, uh, uh, making an impact and, and uh, you know, putting a dent in the universe, so to speak. That's my goals. I also want to have a fight. I want to have a fight. Um, one thing that I've always regretted. Um, <laughs> this guy's funny. Well, a lot of good traders in the UK. Be cool for you to come to the to the UK. Ha <laughs> ha. A lot of cocaine. Just saying. <laughs> well, I'm not a. If we're talking about the electric cocaine, okay, good. Um, the actual cocaine. I know there's a lot of that there too. I'm not one for any of that kind of stuff. But hey, you do what you got to do. I know. You know, it's funny. IGP, for some reason, a lot of people outside of IGP have like a, a, a like perception of like that the sport's kind of like really lame. There are a lot of characters in IGP and uh, some of them like the white stuff. <laughs> I'll just say that, man. So, you know, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun group of people. I'll tell you that much. There are some lames for sure, but they're lames and everything. Uh, it's a fun group of people. There's some real hardcore dudes in, the, in IGP. What IGP really sucks at is promo. And I said this. I've said this. I said this to the GSSCC. I said this. I say this to a lot of people. It's like, you guys do so much awesome shit. You do so much really cool, hardcore, manly training. And you never promote it. You never show it. You always hide it. Man. Yeah, giving out the secrets. You know, you know, Greg. If you've been around, you know. You know. People on the green stuff, people on the white stuff, people on that Bud Light. Well, not Bud Light anymore. I didn't see any Bud Light at the last trial. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Do I have any trainers I recommend in Arizona? Uh, I believe, I believe um, Arizona... Who's out there? Carlos Ramirez? Is he out there? He's in Arizona or Nevada. I, I know he has a spot out there. Check him out. Um, Kevin's fine. I don't know what you're talking about. Kevin never ran away. <laughs> Kevin is too lazy to run away. All right, guys. I'm going to check out. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.